Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. In this Photoshop tutorial using optics, I'll be taking you through a few different shots to show how easy it is to start experimenting with looks and styles using Boris Effects optics. We're going to start with optics in Adobe Photoshop, but we can use the plugin in Adobe Lightroom Classic and as a standalone application, and it works in the same way. Now, I'm going to create a smart layer out of my image so that when I apply optics, it means that I can always go back and work with it non destructively. And applying the optics filter brings us into the optics interface. And as a quick walkthrough of what we're seeing, on the left hand side, we have our effect layers where we can start to build up effects and masks. In the middle, we have our viewer. And at the bottom, we have all of our effects. And if I just click through and see all of the effects in these different categories, there are 160 different filters we can look at. And if I apply a filter, say for example, a lens flare here, on the right hand side, we have our presets. And all of our filters come with a number of different presets, some more than others. And if I just click through here, we can find the right starting point for our image. I can also just move my lens flare into place and make it a little bit bigger, a little bit wider in the viewer. These are still fully customizable. So even though we have presets, all of our filters have parameters, which we can come in and change as well. And I can adjust these scale widths, maybe take the brightness down a little bit, or just adjust the brightness of this bottom flare as well. And I can do that right within the parameters. So I'll also just add a little bit of atmosphere to our flare. This makes it look as if it's light streaming through smoke. Uh, and I can compare the before and after. And I can compare with any of the layers that I've already used using side by side comparisons or a little wipe as I did there. Now I can also blend different effects together. So if I add another layer, I can come into haze and uh, actually that's looking quite nice. I can also come up here, add another one, maybe come to the film lab and look at some sort of film stocks. I'll just take a look at the cross processing ones. And again, we can use any of these presets just to find something that looks close to where we want it to be. And in our layers, we can combine these as well. We can just mix these back, mix back the opacity, just as you would do in Photoshop, or use some of the blend modes that we have here as well. Let's take a quick look at the before and after, and I can compare multiple different layers with the compare mode too. And when we're happy with the result, I can just apply it and that will show up in Photoshop. And because it's a smart filter, I can come in and just turn that on and off. And if I want to change anything, I can just double click on that filter and it will load optics back up with all the effects that I've used still intact. Here we can take a look at another shot and I'm going to apply optics again. And then I'm going to look under the stylize and go to warp chroma. And I'll just drag this out a little bit and make a few adjustments right here. Maybe adjust some of the parameters. And I'll get a kind of interesting look there. I like that one. Now, all of our effects can be masked off in certain ways. We can either use a simple gradient or spot or for some more complex masking, including things like fine edge details or hair, there's also the easy mask that we can use. And the easy mask works by selecting the areas we want to uh, keep in using the green brush. And I can right click and choose which areas I want to take out or exclude from my mat using the paint background brush. There we go. And if I had some fine hair details I wanted to keep in, we could use some of these other brushes as well, but I'm just going to use the paint bucket just to fill in those areas very quickly. Then hit Mac create. And if I hit M, we can see what type of mask we've created here. And this is looking pretty good considering how few details there actually are along some of the edges. 
And I can always come in and refine this mask if I need to. There we go. And I can just create that mask one more time. Let's bring the uh, opacity down there. That's looking pretty good. Now I can add another effect, uh, something like we can really see like uh, fly eye circles. And we can copy those masks just by clicking and dragging it between layers. I can even change my mind about what type of effect or what type of preset I want, and the mask will still stay standing there. And because there's so much flexibility with what you can do with the different color correction filters and masks, uh, when creating render effects for creating stars, moons, or muzzle flashes, lightning bolts, it's actually very easy to start building up different effects in a non-destructive environment. And within optics, we also have a number of Boris effects, sapphire effects, like sapphire glow, lens flare, and film effect, which have been used in lots of uh, Hollywood films and high budget TV series. But these are only now available through Photoshop using optics. And because optics is non-destructive, we don't pay a price for beginning to experiment with different looks before we settle on the right one that we're interested in. So whether it's light leaks or more stylistic looks that you're going for, Optics has a wide variety of effects for you. And we can even use it to build up more complex sorts of compositions as well. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. To learn more about Optics and to download a free trial, then head on over to BorisFX.com. You can also find the latest news and information about all the Boris Effects products.